Live from San Francisco, the California Education Summit. Convened by Assembly Speaker Willie Brown, the summit brings together experts, educators, parents, and children from all over the country with the primary goal to improve California's education system. to the California Education Summit, live from the St. Francis Hotel in downtown San Francisco. This historic meeting brings together the state's and nation's experts on education. The purpose of this two-day summit is to cite problems and opportunities in California's education system. Entrepreneur, a patent holder, and I don't know what this is, but a learning theorist. Is a man who takes technology and causes it to expand the learning abilities and opportunities for students and adults. I'm speaking, of course, of Mr. Bolton. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> the first thing I'd like to do is reframe the notion of technology. Typically, we tend to think of educational technology as a, a particular a device, a computer, a television set, uh, a particular kind of game that children are engaged in or using. And I want to say that every time we're talking about an educational experience that is not um, happening between people that are live and present to one another, there's some form of technology mediating that learning process. Whether it's a book, a book is a piece of technology, or any number of other types of classroom presentations, uh, curriculum driven, um, externally legislated upon the teacher practices for facilitating learning are all different forms of technology. So it's all about learning. But it's not just about learning about things anymore. It's about preparing children to be capable of learning in ways and about things that can't be predicted at the time of their education. I'm going to think about this. This is an entirely new kind of challenge. It's unprecedented in history. It's a time where we now have to speak about making um, an education system in which the capacities for learning of each child is the primary subject of their learning. It's the primary subject, the primary motive for going into an education system today. But just as a child wouldn't learn to walk if they couldn't sense themselves falling, or learn to sing on key if they couldn't hear themselves singing off key, they can't learn about their own capacity for learning if they can't sense them. This is the level of interactivity that we've got to get to, which isn't at the level just about a, a classroom um, practice, but at the level of as each child bumps into their learning needs, if we don't develop a system that will help them become more and more sensitive to their needs, become more awake and conscious of them, then we're not going to be able to be self-extending of their capacity for learning. And when we think about what we have learned about what kind of citizens we need in tomorrow's society, we continue to come back to citizens that have an awakened and ongoing capacity for learning. That's what business needs. That's what parents are most interested in. And once we make the shift from a particular body or corpus of knowledge and skills and come to how do we help individual children become self-extending of their capacities for learning, then an entirely different kind of education system and exercise environment has to form. Now, technology isn't the answer to this, but it can model a new kind of relationship, one designed from the ground to help learners learn about the inner workings of their own learning process. I want to take you now to an experiment that we're conducting at the Cupertino Union School District's Nimitz School. This is a piece of technology we call the learner interface. With this, a child can click on an object that they're interested in and go to what they call the drawer and pull down and look at various types of, we call semantic types, 
of information support, so the words roots. They could look at a more encyclopedic elaboration. As they move around, they click on different types of material. In addition to this level, which we call the reference level, where they can point or identify particular words that they're interested in, and these may be parts of a film or parts of a sound or parts of a, a piece of text, as I've shown you, we also have the power to actually change the way they're looking at the information. So, for example, switch over and look at the key points or something more scientific or take a tour through the people. In this case, this is a little lesson on gravity. In a man of my type, the mind disengages itself from the momentary and merely personal and turns toward the mental grasp of things. It followed from the special theory of relativity that mass and energy are both, are both different manifestations of the same thing, a somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average man. Now. Thank you.